continues on ABC. From ABC News, this is 9-11. So most everybody has left Ground Zero in New York now, and it's similarly true at the Pentagon. People are still gathered in Shanksville in Pennsylvania, but they have left this, this was called the Ring of Honor, the Circle of Honor, early this morning, and you can see now it has, it reminds one a little bit of so many places in the country uh, after September 11th a year ago, including Union Square here in New York, and all around Ground Zero, people just leaving things. And you see very closely, can we go back to that just for one second? Because if you notice in the foreground, in the ring, in the foreground here, you see they brought pictures again of their, of their kin. And one of the most painful experiences for New Yorkers um, a year ago today was people, relatives, going all over the city holding pictures of their relatives. Have you seen this man? Have you seen this woman? My husband has lost... And, and you went everywhere, and they were on railings all around Ground Zero, and they were on railings in the public squares. And by way of tribute today, they have brought them back um, to put them in that circle of honor at Ground Zero, where there were really moving ceremonies today, where all of the names uh, were read. Some of them, of course, who died so absolutely uh, heroic. We want to talk, actually, in this half hour about the heroes of September 11th, and there were many of them. I found a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson the other day who once wrote, heroism feels and never reasons and therefore is always right. And as we know, the tragedy made heroes of hundreds of firefighters and the rescue workers, but there were also many stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things, unsung heroes who felt the need to help. Uh, we asked uh, our correspondent, Michelle Norris, uh, to put together a piece on two people one is a bouncer, the other is an architect. It was like a magnet. I was pushed or pulled towards World World Trade Center. I showed them my Red Cross certification card. They said, yeah, we need you. Let's go get on the truck. And uh, they drove me. On the morning of September 11th, most New Yorkers tried to get as far away as possible from the World Trade Center. But Mike Ballone, like a Nearshi Bodnik, had the opposite instinct. I heard a lot about you. Both men fought to reach Ground Zero, desperate to help. Mike Ballone, a 300-pound nightclub bouncer from Brooklyn, pitched a ride into Manhattan on a fire truck. That was my goal. I wanted to pull one person out alive. In another part of Brooklyn, Nearshi Bodnik saw the inferno from a construction site. An architect and structural engineer, he immediately recognized that the towers were likely to topple. My reaction was to just grab my hard hat and uh, I took a portable radio flashlight and started walking across Brooklyn Bridge. At Ground Zero, Bodnik joined rescue workers and civilian volunteers sifting through the rubble with their bare hands. We were finding nothing but expired bodies and body parts and all kinds of stuff I'd never seen before. Mike Ballone threw himself into the rescue effort a big man who turned out to be a big asset. The fireman that I came in with, they said, uh, Mike, what we really need you to do, since you're a pretty big guy, is we're gonna need you to come in with us and just help us lift the girders to see who we can find. And that's what I did. I just started lifting up beams and helping them jump into the voids, into the, into the holes where the windows used to be. Hello? The work was both grueling and gruesome but Ballone couldn't imagine being anywhere else. He saw a lot of things which a lot of people haven't seen in their lifetime. Uh, he helped, he didn't flinch, stayed there right through. Ballone quickly became an indispensable volunteer. He learned how to operate heavy excavation tools. He was the fixer. I call him the uh, angel of fits because his answer to anything he needs done is no problem. Iron Man, Mike is the Iron Man of the Trade Center. During nine months of recovery and cleanup, Ballone never left the pit for more than a few hours. On Saturday nights, he faithfully returned to Brooklyn. Hi, D girl. Reporting for work at the Legacy Disco. But the rest of the week belonged to Ground Zero. Ballone even slept just steps from the site in St. Paul's Church. 
I would rather sleep on the pew than the cot. The cot was too comfortable. If I slept in the pew, I would only get a couple of hours sleep. So this way I would get back up without any problems. Along the way, he found a new family, adopted by the tight brotherhood of grieving New York firefighters. You guys should get a medal or a statue. I mean, there's a lot of people that should get medals and statues. But, uh, you know, he was special. I got a chance to make and to work with the greatest men on earth who hold down the greatest job on earth. Fire department. Those guys, man. I love them. Malone's sheer brawn served him well in the pit, but things were different for Yershi Bodnik. A Czechoslovakian immigrant who defected to America 15 years ago, Bodnik was determined to help a city he'd come to love. He simply lacked the stomach for work in the pit. There were a ton of people helping with, with their hands and, you know, looking through the debris. And I thought, how can I help that would really make a difference? With his architectural training, Bodnik realized what rescue workers needed most. A visual tool to spot stairwell, elevator shafts, air pockets. So I knew that uh, we shouldn't be just kind of randomly looking through this pile of debris. We should locate and exactly pinpoint the areas where survivors can still you know, be alive. Bodnik remembered that his college, Cooper Union, kept a set of detailed plans for Lower Manhattan in the school's library. The problem, the school, like most of Manhattan, was closed. So he tracked down the college president at home. On Saturday morning, uh, following September 11th, uh, uh, I was in my house, uh, which is right down the street, uh, in my bathrobe, and uh, you know, in the midst of this tension and so on, and the bell rings, and there's a stranger at my door. And he says, who are you? So I showed him my pass, and I said, I'm Yoshi Bodnik, and I need your help. He was very intense, very eager, very enthusiastic, and was clearly a man with a mission. With plans in hand, Bodnik constructed an architectural model that helped rescue workers make sense of the mountain of debris. He put together first a cardboard model to help people understand uh, what was both above ground and what was also below ground. But he still wanted to do more, so he quit his engineering job to create a project called Brainstorm. The goal? build a three-dimensional model of ground zero using computer animation. It was just a total mess. Can you imagine 70 feet of debris pile? And so this model kind of helped to orientate everybody. Through site visits and countless interviews with rescue workers, Bodnik and his team created a stunning visual tool to pinpoint danger zones. Recreating the site and showing, okay, here you can walk or here you can place uh, a crane or any equipment. The model, for instance, helps ground zero construction workers avoid a deadly mistake. What would happen if they were to just pull this uh, building away, this, this wall would then start to fall down and start causing problems for some of the lower floors that were down below there. So we have lots of firemen that were down there looking for uh, other firemen or any survivors, and uh, they could have all been uh, killed by these falling slabs. Bodnik developed a 3D model hoping that it would help find survivors. There were none. But it did protect against a further loss of life. It's an amazing feat. Um, and to be able to say that all that was done without another fatality is, is amazing. Even though the recovery effort is officially over, both men maintain strong ties to Ground Zero. Bodnik is fine-tuning his computer model to help other cities prepare for disaster. We don't want to have another situation where everybody's running around and like we have no sort of plans. Malone, meanwhile, talks to school children about September 11th. That's what helped us. Your cards and letters. Your support. And he has earned a new title, safety director for the New York Fire Department. Both men are too modest to call their work heroic, but those who labored alongside them see it quite differently. Michelle Norris, ABC News, New York.